Hey guys, so we're gonna do like a little get ready with me. I'm gonna do my makeup and get ready um, cause I'm trying to look cute. My husband is flying back in into town um, tonight. He's been gone for three days. So I've been alone with my babies for three days and I'm actually doing a lot better being by myself with them. I know it sounds so bad cause my, my son is gonna be five in a couple months, but um, it's been a struggle. So I have two kids and I'm actually pregnant with my third one. I actually feel like I'm doing a lot better being alone with them um, and I don't lose my cool. Let's get started with my makeup and do a little catch up. Also do our eyebrows first. This is brown. I don't know if it's going to do me good, but this is the new, um, this is a She Glam eyebrow pencil. And for me, it's new. I've never used it before, but this is the packaging. Where'd she go? Okay. Well, I lost it. And fun fact, I actually was gifted this She Glam eyebrow pencil when I was working at pop-up event for Shein. Um, it was in Indiana when I was living in Indiana. Um, and I had the opportunity to work with them through like brand ambassading kind of work, which fun fact, I actually do a lot of those brand ambassading events. Um, it's like a good way to make some money and then not commit to like a long-term job, um, especially when you have kids. I think it works out great. I don't know if brown is my color. I don't think this is gonna work out for me. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my little um, handy dandy Sephora one because it's more of a, it's still like a brown, but it's like more of a darker, darker brown. And this one here looks kind of light. Um, so we're just gonna see the difference. But anyways, so um, I am pregnant with my third baby. I just found out, actually no, I did not just find out. I found out um, pretty early on because I did miss my period and I have really regular periods. I don't, I don't have um, irregular periods. So as soon as there was something off a couple of days late, um, I knew something was up and I do log all my periods through flow. So even flow was like, Hey, is there something different with your body? You should definitely check it out. So I, I took a pregnancy test, but I didn't even like make a big deal about it. Like my, I think my husband was there too, because he was even, he's aware of when my periods are like coming and stuff because I do get like mood swings and, and stuff like that. So, and like me and him are just open about like things like that. So even he knew like my period was coming up. And when he asked me like, Hey, did you get your period? I was like, Nope, didn't get it. So he knew from the very beginning, like something's up too. So, um, I took a pregnancy test around him and he he knew right away. Um, I think I put like the the test down to go check on, to get check on something and then I came back and checked it and I was like, oh shit. And then he came right after me and saw my reaction and he found out right there and then. So it wasn't like a surprise for him um, either. So we both kind of knew from the beginning. And then after we both found out um or we were sure about it we were kind of like in this like shock kind of m like mode but we were talking about having more kids like in the past um and we were just not sure when it was gonna happen because um after my first after my second one i did first and second i did experience postpartum depression for both of them so i didn't want to um I didn't want to get pregnant right away. I was actually scared of getting like pregnant, not because of the pregnancy itself. The pregnancy itself, like thank God has always been pretty fairly easy um, compared to other people that I've heard stories on, like they get complications and then they get like preeclampsia, thing, all, all sorts of stuff that can happen during pregnancy. Like thank God I've always been pretty solid. Uh, for me, it's always been like mentally afterwards, after like recovery, during postpartum, that's when I get like hit the worst and uh it's always like with my mental health i don't know why but it's not 
I don't know. I've been trying to do different things with my daughter. Um, I had her right back to back from my son. So I didn't really learn like ways to cope with like the whole postpartum situation. This one's really light. I don't know how it's going to work. But we're going to try to make it work. Um, but yeah, so with my daughter, I had her back to back with from my son. So I was still like not even fully recovered from my firstborn and I had gotten pregnant like right away. So they are about 13 months apart. Um, and she was not planned, he was planned for sure. And I think maybe that's why my postpartum depression really hit harder around like the second time I wasn't fully recovered, I wasn't fully healed. And um, I was really struggling to like get back to, to being like my, my normal self. Oh, this is really bright. I don't know how this is gonna work, guys. This is like, it's light, light. Maybe if I blend it enough. <laughs> I look like a clown, this is crazy. All right, but let's continue going with this. The same color, and then I'll go in with the darker color to kind of like even it out, I guess. Um, so, Recovery for my daughter was really, really bad. It was hard on me. Uh, I don't think I need to go further into detail. Just know that I was very, very bad postpartum depression. Um, and I think it's still something that even she's three now that I still kind of struggle with. So at this point, I don't know if it's still considered postpartum or it's just kind of like something more like permanent I don't know but I think that's my only biggest fear for having like another child uh my husband and I like we joke around and we say that we wanted four tops four kids tops and I know that it's very doable but I think it's more doable if you have a lot of support like if you have a community you can lean on like if you have like your mother in town or like your mother-in-law or a father-in-law it's just people that like in your family that you can really count on and I, I generally do not have like any of that. My mom lives out of state and I think she's the only one that I can really count on like if I really needed to. Um, she would make the drive. Like, I look like a fucking clown. This is crazy. Um, let's try to blend it out. What color is this? Okay, we might need to not go with this ever again. Let's go with this. Let's try, let's try to even it out. Is it working? This is giving me flashbacks to like 2015 when people would use like a really, really bright contour to highlight and stuff. I'm people, by the way, I used to do that. So yeah, my mom would be like the, my go-to person. And actually, I don't know if you guys, if you guys followed me for a while, you would know that when I lived in California, my mom was like always there helping me and supporting me. Um, my son was the first born grandchild, so, um, she was always willing to, like, be number one to support me and stuff. And I don't know if that's just a tradition for, like, Latinas, like, grandmas just be coming in clutch, like, they're just your whole community, and I think that is, like, so important when it comes to, uh, making your decision of having more kids and such, because, um, they, when you have a community, you guys all just kind of share the load of having, like, kids and i think that's so important i don't know i don't care what people say like oh you you have kids you should be taking care of them like 24 7 but realistically especially me back then like i would work full time like i was active duty so having just a community there to support you would just mean so much and um i think Having her there like really helped me not feel guilty like when I went to work. Um, 
for like long long hours of the day like I'd leave maybe at 6 a.m. and I won't be back till like 6 p.m. or sometimes longer depends depending on like traffic that day or how long it took for us to get released that day things like that or even simple things like I had a duty and I had to be like a 24-hour duty I wasn't really like tripping too much that my kids would be um, home all day and I wasn't really worried about you know child care because I had my mom to help me out it wasn't all the time like that but most of the time um, she was always there kind of coming in clutch to help me out as much as she could so I think that really helped. Um, I think it's so important to have like a community, especially when you have like babies and you're thinking about having more kids and stuff like that. So when I found out I was pregnant with my third one, I think the number one thing that came into my mind was like fear because I don't have, I no longer have that support. Um, I don't have a like really close family here, like where I live now. And it just brings a lot of fear into me because that means that if I ever even consider like getting a new career, which I've thought about many times and I actually do want to get like a full blown job, um, it's going to be so much more difficult. I have to consider like private school or daycare and I think private school is more equivalent to the type of care that um, would give our kids at home so that's why I even can like I'm even entertaining the idea of private school because if I'm gonna put my kids like in a daycare or something I really want to put them somewhere where uh, I'll pay the people enough so they will take care of my kids the right way I think I know it's sad to say but I've seen cases way too many cases where it's like a lot of the times if the daycare is really affordable um, they're not going to be taking care of kids that well because they're like underpaid and um, maybe a lot of kids get cramped in one same spot. And I just, I can't, I can't deal with that kind of like mom guilt personally. Like I would rather not put them in any daycare when it comes to that case. But I know there are options. They're just a lot more expensive. And I think if I were to get a career and even considered that kind of um, care, I would really work my ass off to afford something like that. The first fears of being being pregnant with my third one. And then also when I found out I was pregnant with my third baby, it was not like your first, rea like how you react when you're pregnant with your first. When you're first, it's kind of like, you know everyone's gonna be happy for you because you know you're, you're gonna be a mom for the first time. It's kind of like, um, you're excited to be a mom. Everyone's excited for you to be a mom, things like that. Once you get pregnant with the second one, it's kind of expected. You're kind of like, oh, well, first she's gonna have a sibling, how, how much fun. It's kind of um, like encouraged almost. But when it, when it comes to your third one or even like after a third, this is just what it feels like to me. And it feels like people are gonna be more judgmental. Like, when are you gonna be, when are you gonna stop? Are you done? Um, questions like that kind of arise. Um, obviously when you're around the right people, like a great community, uh, support system and stuff, those questions will not be asked that way. But when you come from people that are not supportive or just strangers in general, I think that's more of the, the reaction that you get. So it just feels different. And I think that was kind of like how it felt because when I found out I was pregnant, I was able to keep it in longer, like not tell anybody about my pregnancy much longer than I could with my first or my second baby. Um, as soon as I found out with my first, I was so excited that I had to tell my whole family. I tried to make it cute. We had a whole gender reveal. Everything was like so much support from all, all over the place. When it came to my second, um, I feel like it was the same thing, very equivalent to my first, except we didn't do a lot of the things. Like we didn't have um, a gender reveal, uh, we didn't have something else. Oh, we didn't have anybody come to the hospital. Like we didn't tell anybody um, that I was like in labor. So I think things were like a little bit different for my, for my first, my second. And now with my third one, I didn't tell anybody that I was pregnant until like 15 weeks, I think 15 weeks pregnant, uh, where I was already kind of growing a belly. So I wanted to like 
surprise my family, even like my closest people in my life, which is my mom and my sister. Um, we were really holding off to tell them. Um, and it came out like, surprise, I'm pregnant. And here's my big old belly, you know, here's my belly to, to show you. So it was so different, just like night and day compared to how it was the first time around. And it was just so different. I, it feels different. Even right now, like having, you know, just being pregnant, I guess it, it's going by a lot faster, I think, only because um, I am busy. I'm really busy with my with my first two. So they're constantly needing stuff for me. Um, luckily, right now, I'm even able to record this video because uh, my son is older, so he's playing quietly like right here. And then my daughter is sleeping. She's taking a nap, which is very rare. She doesn't take naps during the day anymore. Um, so I'm even able to record this video. But it's just so different, guys. So different Have with your third. And then I'm also a third baby. Like I was born, I was a third one of my, of my mom. And I don't know, it's just, you always hear like the third one is like, the most challenging one and i'm not ready for that to be honest <laughs> i'm not ready for that challenge yet but i guess ready or not baby's coming so um what else feeling with my third baby some of the positive on a positive note i feel like i'm kind of like ranting negatively um on a positive note um it does feel nice to kind of know what to expect um in the way of like pregnancies you are more confident in like your ability to go to the gym you know that um at least me for example like for my previous babies like i didn't have preeclampsia i didn't have any like um high risk pregnancies so for me personally like i know what to expect i know that i'm able to and capable of going to the gym th doing things like that staying active i know that if i feel a certain way it could be my pregnancy i know you know like this is not my first rodeo, so I kind of do know how to, what to expect when it comes to like little things. But yeah, guys, it's a challenge, but we're over here trying to make it work. Um, I really did want to have more kids before 30, so I'm currently 27, and I kind of wanted to, you know, finish having kids before I hit 30 for sure. So uh, whether this is my last one or you know, we're not thinking about having any more kids right now. There's some days where like the kids are very hectic and we're like, this is it, we're done. Or there's also days where um, we're like, oh, you know what, it was not too bad. We can definitely have what we had planned to and having like our four. But then, you know, I, I don't know. It's very mixed emotions whether this is our last one or not because they do, like I said, require a lot from you as a person and it could be draining. Even if you have, like, your partner could be, like, a great support system. But I truly believe, like, it'd be a lot more enjoyable if I had family nearby, like, the grandparents. Where if my husband and I want to go out for, like, the weekend or if we want to just do things like me, record a video, like, get back to things that I love to do, which is actually doing YouTube. I remember how much fun that used to be. But when I think about wanting to do all these things, um, not having someone to like a group of people to help you and support you throughout the time like it is just a lot harder um and it does make me realize that i was just truly blessed when i was in california how my mom was there like on call seriously like she would drop everything to come to her grandkid and i know she would do the exact same thing but we are just a lot further so um it would now have to require like me to fly her out or um her just trying to make that drive and it's just a lot more it's just a lot more um requirements but she's someone that my kids truly truly love to be around so that i'm really blessed with that like my kids love their their nana so even like hearing hearing her i think they just like they really truly um you know how the like, kids can sense like when a when like a grandparent like truly loves them um and I think kids in general can sense whether they're around a good person or not. I think that's something that I'm blessed to say that my kids truly, truly love my, my mom because it's like she truly loves her, her grandkids. Whew. I'm out of breath. But I think 
that's one of my biggest challenges right now is just not having that support system for sure. And then going back to things like um, finding what you love to do and starting to do things that you love to do again. For me, like I, like I mentioned before, it was doing YouTube videos. I actually was doing, I was being very consistent um, after my second was born. I think it was when I was pregnant with my daughter and then a little bit before I was pregnant with my daughter, I was very, very active on social media. Um, I was very um, active and with my YouTube videos with my and my YouTube channel and things like that. And I think that's when I grew the most. I think I, I plateaued at 12,000 for a while. And I think that's probably where I'm still at now. But I did notice that when I was doing these things, it felt like a hobby. It didn't feel like a job. It, like I actually genuinely enjoyed doing it. And um, when I stopped, because I stopped for a minute, um, I did notice the difference. I was like, whew. I kind of stopped doing what you like, you know, when you stop doing something that you love to do, like you genuinely love to do, it does kind of take a toll on you. Like you just put your yourself on pause and, and I guess it comes with the, like, the territory of being like a new mom and stuff, trying to figure out how that works and stuff. But just having the, opportun uh, the opportunity now that my kids are a little bit older to get back on YouTube and like do videos and record and just have fun while doing it, it does feel really nice because just just doing this again guys like it feels like I have a little bit of my identity back which is like a huge roller coaster once you become a mom you have your kids whether you had your whole routine before all of that just takes a huge pause because you have to learn to be a, you have to learn to be a mom you have to learn to to be good at what you do, be there for your kids, you you get tested in a whole new level, you learn patience, you learn all kinds of things, right? And it's never like a one shoe fits all. Things that I, we did with our son does not work with our daughter. So it's not like, there's no manual for having children. So you just have to learn as you go. And it's the most challenging yet rewarding thing. Like I can't describe it. It's like a love, love-hate relationship with yourself because you're just trying to learn these new things and it's very very challenging um regardless if you have a very hyperactive child or you have a very calm child you still have to learn um who they are like as a little person and what works for them or what doesn't Whew. but um yeah those are like one of the biggest challenges for me for sure I started with my eyebrows today, which is I kind of fluctuate. I start sometimes I do my eyebrows after today. I started with my eyebrows, then I went into cream and liquid, and then I powdered everything down. And then um, I'm gonna go in with my liquid eyeliner and do a little pop eye, mm, and then I'll see what I do after. Um, sorry, I cannot talk. I cannot multitask when it comes to um, doing my liquid eyeliner, but I'm trying. Yeah, it's so crazy guys like where does time go i'm about to have my third child my son's gonna be five um in a couple months i still remember buying our first house and doing his first birthday party there and it's already been forever ago yeah so really random and um super super random by the way so when we bought our first house on zillow i claimed it so i put i claimed our house then it was around the time i think it was like a little bit before covid when we wait was it before covid I think it was during COVID. That's when like the market shifted, the interest rates like 
went all the way down and it was a very hot time to purchase homes that's when we decided to sell our first house that we ever bought and a year later so a year after we bought the house we decided to sell it uh, and move out of like the san diego area and move to what we had remember i don't know if you guys remember but we built our home also in california but it wasn't in san diego county anymore um and we were able to upgrade our home like it was like this beautiful house that it was like we're first owners first first um time experiencing this it was a great experience overall but the fun fact and it's super random that the first home we ever bought um was recently sold here i think it was this year for about 200 300 dollars above what we had bought it for and it was just so crazy because that house for me back then it was like an older home it was our you know our first home our first home that needed a lot of upgrades like um I think the roof needed to be replaced within a year or two. Um, the backyard was not completed, so we were starting to do like little renovations in the backyard, what we could do like DIYs. And we just didn't have the budget for that, especially being first homeowners. We did not want to invest so much money into a house or like even live in a house that needed so many repairs that we just didn't have the capital to like build or like the time because we were both active active duty during the time when we bought that house we were literally like almost only there during the weekends when um, either my husband and i didn't have duty or when we just had time off um or when we come home like we would leave hella early in the morning and then come really late at night so we were just there a very minimum and the time we were there we did not want to spend trying to upgrade a home that was like really aged so we decided to sell and buy a house that was like already like squared away you like everything was so beautiful um and i think looking back at it i was like the best decision we could have made because that kind of opened our eyes to the possibility of real estate and getting into real estate and stuff because we made we made we actually made money from our first first house um where we took that money and we put it into our second home which was um extending the driveway and putting concrete and grass in our backyard the in our house in california the one we recently sold um so we were able to do that and it was just the power of like real estate because we would not have like 20 grand to just drop with our regular jobs right so i think that kind of just opened up our perspective and our like mindset to wow like real estate really can have some perks so when my husband got out of the marine corps um, I think it was 2022. Yeah, it was like 2022. Um, I got out 2021. So he got out, I think years or a year or like a couple months after I did, cause I had extended. Um, we were in a time in our lives where we were just gonna, we were just gonna, um, settle for living into like that house. And we were just gonna like find a way and find new jobs to just pay off like the mortgage and we'll be fine we'll be living great and we'll be in california near, near our family or near my family but then but i don't know I, I guess i'm the crazy one because even then i was just telling my husband like babe i just feel like there's something else for like something else out there for us because the house was beautiful and i loved it it was a four bedroom it had a loft upstairs it had it was a great community it was all new community um but there was something about the house that when I was thinking like more long, long term, I just couldn't see myself being there for like years and years to come. One, being in the state like California was like the interest rate, no, not the interest rate, I'm sorry, the uh, property taxes yearly, the yearly annual property taxes were just really high, which that's a given being Cali. I think traffic though, like expensive gas, just the um, cost of living there was just not something that was such a turn on. I feel like you would have to have a lot of, like you have to have like multiple jobs per person to live comfortably in California, especially um, unless you have like a college degree or you have like um, a really successful YouTube channel, things like that. I 
And for me, with when it came to YouTube, like, I was kind of, like, on and off. I was kind of, like, on and off because um, I was trying to live, like, two lives, I guess, in a way. Like, I love YouTube. This was, like, what would make me happy and stuff. But then when I would go, like, to work, I, let, I made, like, YouTube very hush. Like, I didn't want nobody to know about my YouTube channel. I thought it was very, like embarrassing almost i didn't want people to pull up my videos and kind of mock me in front of other people so i think because of that it really stopped me to continue my momentum and like grow more because i was just afraid what people were gonna say about me especially at work i wasn't prepared to deal with that kind of energy and um i was just in a place in my life where i just try to be very quiet about my personal life um and this like youtube would be like considered my personal life because it's just something that i love to do it was like my my hobby and this was before youtube like i think this was before youtube really really blew up um i started doing my i started youtube a long long time ago i think it was like 18 19 i'm 27 so it's been like over 10 years but i have put like all my videos like my first videos private because I did like my first pulley video before I joined the Marine Corps. Uh, and then sure enough, people from the Marine Corps like found my pulley video and they were pulling it up and showing me like kind of mocking me and stuff like that. And I don't know why, like if I would have been like stronger minded, I would have been like, just shook it off and be like, fuck it. This is just the, what I like to do. But it genuinely just made me so embarrassed and like made me feel uh, so bad about myself. So I just kind of paused YouTube. And then it was so like ironic, um, like a year or two after that happened, like everyone wanted to start a YouTube channel. And I was like, why did I beat myself up? Like, why did I let these people really talk, talk down to me about like making YouTube videos? And it was just the most embarrassing thing. And like kind of made me angry because uh, it just made me kind of angry because it made me really like think like these people I really let these people talk down to me and gen like deep down they wanted to do the same thing and they ended up like trying to do the same thing I think it's like because it was before it was like socially acceptable um so that was a huge lesson learned for me personally because after that I was like I'm never gonna let that happen again like I'm not gonna let people talk down to me about like make, wanting to make YouTube videos and stuff like that and um it actually happened again afterwards by the way it was so embarrassing but it's like I'm like sharing all my deepest deepest like secrets with you guys right now because um it was actually with my husband's family that time because um, I would like make videos and stuff and I think um, I brought up I brought my husband into like some of my videos would be would make videos together and would have fun doing it I think he even had his channel and then um, you would if you would hear what these people were saying were like saying to him they were like mocking him and just like talking down to like him doing videos it really brought him and his self-esteem down when it came to his videos and he's like this uplifted guy like he um he's like the high energy um that i wish i had naturally but he really stopped doing all those videos and he was no longer supportive on mine he was just more like that's you that's not me things like that and i just felt his energy completely shift and i think that's when i was like yo like I'm no longer going to be around people that are not, they're not supportive. And I think that's why I'm really big on protecting my energy. Like, I don't care who you are. I don't care how close you're, you're supposed to be in our lives. But if you're not going to be bringing like positive words and encouragement um, to things that we want to do in life, like you have no place, you have no business in our lives. You know what I mean? Like if you're not going to be supportive with like, what we want to do it's not just about youtube i'm talking about like having a third child for example um regardless if the baby was planned or not that's something that's happening in our lives right now and if you're not supportive then you don't need to be in our lives um I, i'm not asking you to like be a nanny and like take care of my kids i'll never ask somebody to watch my kids especially if i know for a fact it's not even um 
it's not offered. Like, if you don't offer to take care of my kids, I'm not going to ask you unless it's, oh, excuse me, unless it's something we've talked about in the past and they're like, you know what, girl, like, ask me. I'm, I'm like there, you know, like, I would love to watch your babies and stuff like that. Then I'll consider, consider you, but if you're not even there to offer, I'm never going to step out of my way and be like, please take care of my children. Like, I'm never going to put my kids in a situation to be around to be around people that don't want them you know I never I will never do that to them they don't they don't they deserve better than that Whew. but um yeah so like I've been a little bit more strict about my who's like around me who I let come like close to us because I don't want to be wasting my time like getting um like even just negative feedback from people that I don't even ask their opinion from you know or getting fed up with people's drama that I don't care about so Unfortunately, my light, my little light that I have on top of my phone died. So we're just going to continue the video um, with this sad lighting. Um, and then I, I did put it to charge. So hopefully it's charged even just a little bit for the outro. So what was I saying? I think I was just being like more like open and like strict on like who I let around me and who uh who I let like in my life and just who I bond with I guess like who am I spending time with and I think um being more strict on who's like around me also like allows me to just be myself more because when I, I don't know if this happens to you guys but like when you're around people that are just not your people like you just are more closed off like you can't be yourself around them because it's like it's just different like the energy is different you know or like you hang out with people that for example um you hear like something that was said about you by this person and like you've heard it you try to be like a bigger person or whatever but then you're aware of it and you're just like hmm why am i even hanging out with you but that's what I'm talking about. Like, just being around people that I just, you don't fuck with. I can find my Urban Decay one, which is my favorite eyeliner ever. So, I'm going to use this one, which I don't even know what brand it is. It's kind of already fading away. This is, like, the my secondary one. I genuinely cannot find my, my favorite, favorite freaking eyeliner. And I just feel like I'm going to find it when I'm not looking for it. This is my little backup light. It's not it, though. So, this is the light I was using. Um, and it, it would think something that I don't like about this light, I got this in Best Buy. Um, and it says that it was supposed to give me, I think, four hours of, of battery life. Um, and this thing did not even last an hour. So, false advertisement. And, I, and now it's saying it needs an hour and a half to charge. So, I need like a good light recommendation for you too, because clearly I don't have a setup. Like, I'm barely getting my self back in the groove of like filming and stuff now that i'm in more of like my place like i think moving out of indiana was one of the best things that could have happened to me because now i'm back in my element i think i'm back in taking control on like what i do my schedule um who i have around me like people around me and then also it's just like right now i'm chilling at home like recording i'm comfortable like i'm in my vibe like this is what i wanted for a long time but when you're around other people that kind of control your schedules and stuff it's kind of like you get pulled left and right and you're just like trying to be a good person and like I think for me the best thing that could happen is being back in the west coast and taking control back like of my life and like doing what I want to do again which is like my youtube videos being a good mom um I want to expand my business uh in real estate and also like you just never know what can happen when you're like in your element and like you're in your zone in your space and you don't have like all these outside noises really just pouring in on you or like just bad influences like 
trying to get you distracted to doing like bad things like that they're used to like bad habits and stuff i think when you are in like your own headspace and like basically your element like amazing things can happen especially if you can focus and like just do great things in your life so for sure just being back here i feel that like a hundred percent i think now i just really got to battle with my own demons like getting out of bed dealing with my mental health like my depression and stuff i think when i'm really going through it i really just got to turn the camera on and like get ready and get it all done and maybe that will like snap me out of like the funk that i'm in and um get me back to focus because um yeah being a mom is not for the week being a real estate investor is not for the week managing airbnbs out of state is not for the week and i think um also being married is not for the week all this stuff is like a challenge so i got this like a best buy like but the, not with this and i cannot find my camera i don't know where that camera is at um and i really hope i didn't lose it i really hope it's just misplaced somewhere maybe in the storage or like somewhere around here um because i have a lot of footage in that camera like baby pictures but it's also like me like filming older youtube videos um so i really hope that i have that camera or ho i hope it pops up soon but this light i got it from best buy and um it was like my starter up cam um, lighting which i think i can turn it on right now because it's connected oh yeah wow it's working let's see if it works connected okay. oh it's not gonna reach I got my big old pregnant belly over here. But um so yeah, this is a light. This is, it's actually working. It's working that it's connected. I hope let me see. Okay, so I didn't know I can use it while it's connected. So now that I know that, it's actually gonna be better because um uh, when it's not connected, it doesn't last very long and it's just like it's just like a hot mess because um it doesn't last long so i have to be kind of like quick when it comes to doing my makeup or like recording i think the only time i obviously can't keep it connected is like when i'm walking around doing vlogs with like for you guys around my house or whatever so now that i know i can record and have it connected that's a great exhaust thing i did not expect to be pregnant again guys by the way not this soon it just kind of came as a surprise you're pregnant well not a surprise because you know you know you're doing your stuff but it's like i i thought it was gonna be like maybe next year or something not necessarily this year what am i saying i feel like we kind of wanted to have a baby this year but i guess time flies and i realized like it's already towards the end of the year like do it now or never so I do want to be done having kids by 30 um, so I can just fully focus on like my fitness and like getting in the best shape of my life um, and yeah not having to worry about I mean having like a crisscross moment here um, not having to worry about like having more kids I really really love my kids and I love them being at a small age genuinely really really do but i think it's very important to like take care of yourself and i feel like having kids is like it's very very time consuming and like i said it's not for the week it's not for the week and i feel like i was weak for a very long time and it took me a lot to learn not to be a week a week biatch Again, I don't know what brand this is. I think this is like an off-brand eyeliner. But I cannot find my favorite eyeliner for like my favorite eyeliner that does not smudge and last a long time is called the Urban Decay. It's like a gray um, eyeliner. I think I've showed it many times, like on my Instagram or like my YouTube. It's been like my go-to. I would keep buying that, even though they did change up the formula a little bit. Um, it's like my holy grail, and I cannot find it in my bag and I don't I don't put my makeup anywhere else like this is my where I put all my makeup so I don't know it's probably gonna be my daughter's bedroom she loves makeup but yeah guys so these lashes are from 
Lily Lashes. As you guys can see, a little container here. This is a cool little um, eyelash container. It saves them whenever you're done. Just pop them out, pop them off, and then put them in here, which has been a game changer for me because. I mean, now it's like giving me an excuse to actually put them back where they belong. And normally I just have like little caterpillars like all throughout the house. And then I do have a cat, so he'll find it and be like, oh, cool, a toy. And then my eyelashes will be like never to be seen again. Um, and then they're not cheap, cheap um, eyelashes. So it's kind of like throwing money away every time when you can like reuse it once or twice. So these are very big and dramatic. I don't think these are the Miami ones, actually. I think these are like kimono or something like that. They're like a thicker, more dramatic look for sure. Um, I don't know how I feel about them, actually. They're kind of very thick. I like when they're like, when they give me like, they emphasize my natural lashes, but not really overpower my entire eye. But unfortunately uh the my other lashes they're like my favorite ones i think are called miami lashes from lily lily lashes it's like a little tongue twister from lily lashes so um i don't i don't know what i do with those these are cute but i don't know they're very very dramatic we might just keep them on i don't know we might just keep them on because um, I don't have any other lashes and I did want to look super cute for my husband that's flying in tonight. A big old part of my belly. What? What? I can't hear you. I'm tired. Go get a blanket. Get yourself a little blanket. You want me to get it for you? Yeah. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I had to be a mom real quick. Take care of my kiddos. Uh, which I really appreciate them for even allowing me to even make a video. Um, but I do appreciate my babies for even allowing me to like record a video because I had to ask like for permission basically like hey can i do my video like are you going to be able to stay quiet um lay, lay i would like lay down all the stuff that they need and they've been good so if you hear them here and there it's like inevitable like they're small but they're actually like let like they're letting me do this video which is awesome i don't know how i feel about these lashes they're kind of big we're just gonna roll with it though. I'm gonna keep this a little closer. And then let's try to finish off. I'm gonna do like very new natural lip. Pero para ya terminar, para que no digan que no, okay? wondering why it's so hard to like my lip liner is like just gliding way too much and i'm like oh i forgot to rub off my uh my lip moisturizer Remind me to never do that again because that was hard. I think oh I think overall like my makeup came out really really nice except for these over dramatic lashes that I just I'm not gonna take off anymore.
and it looks so much better when I blur out the under eyes. Alright, I think I am done oh, with my makeup. My husband's gonna come back to a baddie. Okay, he's gonna remember why he don't leave for long trips. <laughs> he doesn't leave for long business trips. No, I'm just kidding. But um yeah, I wanted to look really cute for him to come home. I did make dinner earlier, which is easy, super easy dinner, which was just spaghetti. But tomorrow though, tomorrow's Sunday, um, NFL Sunday. And I really want to go off. Like I wanted to, uh, I've been watching like uh, recipes on like TikTok because it's been like, TikTok's like the new Google, I feel, when it comes to like getting straight to the point on like recipes and stuff. And I really wanted to make um, pupusas revueltas, pupusas revueltas, um, with like either casamento or like platanos fritos with like black beans and stuff. And I don't know if you guys know or not, but I'm Central Americana, so I like all of that food like i love that food and we've been to a place here recently like when we came we just moved here um and it was like mid it was like quesadilla basically and there was like where's the revueltas like where's the food inside but um I, i'm like in my senora era i guess i'm like in my senora mom era and i really want to learn how to do like a lot of things homemade um so we're getting something forgetting my blush I was like something's off but um so I've been looking at recipes and I was like bro this does not look hard at all and like shit it's in my heritage so it probably come out bomb too and um I was like I can definitely learn to make some pupusas for like NFL Sunday the only thing though we've been really like getting into like church and stuff and I don't know about eating pork at all especially on Sundays like meat and stuff um so that's kind of what's holding me back but i think i'll still do it and just be like you know what like they're good they're really good so i don't know well i'm, I'm like that's what's like debating whether i should do it or not because pork sometimes really fucks me up inside and i think it just it probably has, has to do with like the way it's cooked maybe it's not fully cooked or i don't know what it is but um i'm still gonna try to do them um uh, with the whole like the whole thing and that'll be like his tomorrow like lunch and dinner um for like nfl because me and my husband like we're kind of nerds when it comes to like marvel nfl football um what else i think like star wars video games like when it comes to all that stuff we like we have a cool bond because um we have like a mutual understanding and like love for things like that uh obviously he can't relate when it comes to like makeup and stuff because that's like something i love to do um but yeah all right i think i'm done talking so much you guys Whew. so anyways this is where i'm gonna finish off with it's the fix plus it's like my favorite um what am i saying oh like dewy finish spray that kind of like really locks everything in you'll see right now because i put a lot of powder so you're gonna see like once i put this on it's gonna like lock it in and look really nice lashes are kind of taking away a lot from my eyes but we're gonna go with it because that's all i had right now um talking about putting my lashes back i didn't put my other two lashes back like my favorite other two and when i opened this box i only had these lashes in here which i was a little disappointed in myself but um i don't know i'm gonna have to buy some more lashes buy some new makeup kind of like restart like my whole um favorites and go-to's because i'm running out of a lot of my old makeup but yeah, thank you so much for sticking around with me, you guys. Um, it's been a minute where I actually felt good to be sitting in front of a camera again. And it feels amazing to be to be back in my element, back in my beautiful like environment. Like this is my this is my home. And my kids did a great job staying quiet, like in the background, because they're over here like playing around and stuff very quietly. Um, and I think at first it was kind of hard because they weren't used to me doing videos again. And now that I'll get like in a routine, they'll know like, okay, mom's gonna make like a quick video, let her like, we'll give her her little her time because as soon as I'm turning this camera off, it's like mom mode at 100, you know, like I don't have help right now. So um, my babies are riding with me through it all. And yeah, it was a, it was so much fun. And 
thank you so much for sticking with me and i love you and i'll see you in my next video bye